Let there be testimonies, O oh God. Let there be a change in us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Speak, act, and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated in God's presence this morning. You are welcome to the house of God. I hope everyone is doing well. I bring greetings from Pastor BC and Pastor Tony. As some of you might know already, they are out of town. So I really thank God and our senior pastors for the privilege to minister th this morning, uh, the word of God. And I believe that God is here to do something new in our midst. Amen. I want you to nod your neighbor and say, are you ready for God to do something new? God is here to do something new. All this month, um, Pastor has been ministering to us about dominion. And last week, uh, the senior pastors talked about dominion over crises and storms of life. Amen. And the text of Focus on Dominion has been from Genesis 1, 26 to 28. If we want to read that very quickly, Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Amen. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. It is a scripture, especially 28, is something that we confess in my household at least every morning because it is the blessing with which when God blessed us, when he created us in his image. Can we have that up? Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the audiovisual team? Let's celebrate them. Amen. See, you celebrate them and the scripture came up. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon Verse 27, upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful. Somebody say be fruitful. Somebody say I am fruitful. Say I multiply. I replenish the earth. I subdue it. And I have dominion. I have dominion. And so God created us to have dominion. And God has given us dominion over everything he created. And to enjoy everything. That's why a lot of times when I still see plane flying in the sky. You know, even though I've flown so many times, I'm still in awe of it. I don't know if you are awed by it. But I'm like, what is, you know, I mean, the physics of it, the, the gravity, everything is so, so, I mean, amazing. I never take for granted the vastness of God's wisdom and the creativity, ability that he has given us, you know, to create and to do things. Amen. So in the past uh, few weeks and also in the coming weeks, we're going to be talking about dominion over fear, dominion over demons. These are some of the things that pastor is hoping to cover. Dominion over the elements. And today we're going to be looking at financial dominion. Um, dominion over lack and poverty. Dominion over sickness. Amen? Amen. So we are focusing today on financial dominion. Amen. And when I talk about financial dominion, I want you to think beyond money. A lot of times when we hear the word financial, we are thinking of money. But do you know that money is actually a very small subset of having dominion? I want you to think big when God created man. There is no place in Genesis when he created us that, and God gave man money and told him, change it and multiply money. No. God did not give man money. What God did was created a place and he put man in it and tell him to cultivate it. So what the enemy does at times is limit us in our understanding when it comes to financial issues. 
to only think in the context of money. And it limits us in our ability to function in purpose. Because then we become so focused on the money, 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 and we lose sight of what God wants to do. And the Holy Spirit will help us this morning. I just want us to go back to what was God's intent when he created us? And what did God say about supply? And demand. Let's look at Genesis 2, 5 to 15. Please open your Bible, take notes, you know, audiovisual at times, you know, it's a wavelength. So we thank God for them, but I want you to flow. Be your own audiovisual this morning so that we can maximize the time that we have. And I would really appreciate if there's some accountability. I need accountability with my time. So please hold me accountable um, with the time. Or if somebody can <laughs> let me know when, you know, I have only 15 minutes left, I need to know. So in, in Genesis chapter 2, 5 to 15, it says, When no bush of the field was yet in the land. I, I want you to imagine that we are in, the, in this universe, this world that we are in. It says, no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not yet caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to walk the land. And a mist, this is verse 6, I'm reading English Standard Version. And a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Verse 7, then the whole, then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living creature and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. And there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one I'm going to jump. Um, and, and I want to read from verse 12. And it says, and the, and the gold of the land was good. Amen. And the gold of the land was good. Okay. Verse 13 says, the name of the second river is the, is the Gideon. It is the Gion. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. 14, and the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is, is the Euphrates. 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to walk it and to keep it. How many times did you see ground dust land? Who can tell me the amount of time they counted dust, land, ground, plenty. Things that were growing from the ground was mentioned over and over again. You and I were created from where? From the dust. We were brought out of the earth. Amen? And things that we are using in today's age, everything that we need, all the materials that you have on this chair, a lot of it, some emerged from, some, from where? From the ground. The, the precious stones that we have comes from where? From the ground. So I'm, I'm setting a stage here. I need you to follow me. The Holy Spirit will help us. We are painting a picture of the bigger picture of what it means to function in financial dominion. Amen? And so financial dominion, I believe, is rooted and established in the covenant that we have with God. We need to understand the covenant that God made with us from the beginning. What God gave us, the original thing that God gave us, was a garden. Now you may be thinking, well, garden don't yield that much interest these days. Again, you are limiting what we are talking about here. So the Holy Spirit will give us inspiration as we go. 
Amen. I believe that financial dominion is the culmination of financial knowledge, you know, financial insight, supply, and access. Some people may have financial knowledge, but they may not have the supply. There are a lot of people who have understanding of financial systems in all manner of countries, and they, they are very, very, they don't have resources to function. And so financial dominion, uh, as the Holy Spirit gave me the, the revelation for it, and I want you to write this down. Financial dominion is the power to identify, to multiply, and maintain generational su supply in any environment. Somebody please write that down. I didn't read that in a textbook. The Holy Spirit gave that. I'm going to read it again. Financial dominion is the power. Somebody say power. power. It, ha it doesn't come from books. Books is good. We're going to talk about that. Classes are good. But it's a power. It's a divine power. Say with me, financial dominion. Say it after me. Is the power to identify to multiply and maintain generational supply in any environment. There are a lot of times when we give too much credit to the environment. We say, ah, the environment is not yielding. The environment is bad. Well, who made the environment? Who is king over the environment? The king of kings and the lord of lords. When Jesus fed the 4,000 and the 5,000, you know, in both situations, the environment was not conducive. It was a deserted place. There was no food in sight. There was no way to feed these people. And with very little, Jesus fed thousands of people. Amen. So please move with me to the next slide. Today we are just going to be looking at the life of Isaac very quickly. We are all going to read together Genesis um, 26, 1 to 33. I believe so much in the, in the power of the word of God. I believe that there's something about hearing the word of God that brings faith. I believe that the word of God, when you speak it, it acts as an activator and a catalyst to turn things. I believe that as we read this scripture, that there shall be chains broken off in the name of Jesus, that there will be indeed freedom in our minds, that the, uh, uh, every, every fetter on our feet will be loosed and we will move forward. I want you to, I want to beg your indulgence that we read this together. If you can rise up, you can. If you, if you need to sit down, please be seated. Genesis 26 from verse 1. And the Bible says, And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. Verse 2. Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Verse 4. And I will make thee to multiply, and I will give, and in thy seed, amen. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Verse 6. And Isaac did what? Verse 7. Audiovisual. Verse 7. We are reading to 33. So you are, And the men of the place asked him of... And he said, For he feared to say... Lest said he, the men of the place should kill. Jump to verse 10. And Abimelech said, What is it thou hast done unto us? One of the people might. And thou shouldest have brought. Verse 
Verse 12. Say it again. Then Isaac what? And? Verse 13. Let's jump to verse 16. Keep going. 17. Eighteen. Jump to thirty. Verse thirty. Thirty. Okay, let's read 28 together. And they said, Thou art thou the blessed of the of the word? Verse 30. And he made them a feast. 31. And they rose up. Verse 32. Thirty-three. Amen. Amen. The sermon is over. <laughs> Just say it. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. That is what everything else is built on. And so very quickly this morning, I, we needed to hear that. We needed to read it. I hope when we get home, we're going to read it again. I want you to read that. Genesis chapter 2, please write it down. I want you to make sure you read again that Genesis 26 from 1 to 33 to reflect on this because what we need, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the next, please, if you just stay on that financial dominion um, slide, the case of Isaac. So what we read in that scripture shows us very quickly um, that, you know, it, it, Isaac did what? Isaac stayed where God wanted him to stay. He sowed in the land and he yielded increase for him. Amen. He also dug a well. He didn't just dig one. We only saw an instance, but we're going to see that he actually dug many wells. Amen. And those wells had an origin, amen? But there was also a well that he himself had to dig, amen? And we are also going to see that, you know, there was contention and there was strife and there was a lot of agitation around what he was doing. And we saw that Isaac never gave up because he had the word of God and it was where God wanted him to be. So we're going to just go through... Um, each of those points very quickly. The first thing about financial dominion, living in financial dominion, that is multi-generational, that is impactful, not just for me, myself, is to be where God wants us to be. Somebody say, be where God wants you to be. I don't think you need to show it at my back, please. Um, you can just project it on the side so that that way um, it's not distracting for the people watching us from home amen be where God wants you to be do we have that on 
Do we have it on? Be where God wants you to be. Amen? Genesis 26, 2-3. We read it. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Everybody was scrambling. There was famine in the land. People were moving to Egypt. And it looked like Isaac already made up his mind that he was going to go to Egypt because there was no supply where he was. What is the situation around us today? Economically, as a nation, maybe individually, there may be certain things, a trend that is happening. Everybody is moving to Puerto Rico. Everybody is moving to California because there is a gold rush there or something is going on. But God appeared to Isaac and told him, this is where you need to be. Amen. He says, do not go down to Egypt, dwell in the land of which I shall tell you, sojourn in this land. And in verse 6, he says, so Isaac did what? Isaac settled. That word settled is deep. <laughs> you know when you have something that is a concussion and it's a mixture? Is set to at times the best part of it is is set to is seats, and then they will tell you shake it. Right? When something is set to, that means there is a determination and a, 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 a determination purposefully, intentionally determined. I'm trying to emphasize this to be where God wants him to be. So if we are going to have financial dominion, we need to be where God wants us to be. It's very, very important. You know, in Matthew 17, 27, there was a need that rose up. And Jesus told the disciple what to do. He told them where to go and how to get a coin to pay a tax. He was very, very particular about the location where they should go, where they will find the fish. The fish was in the mouth of a, a, the, the coin was in the mouth of a fish. Why did a coin need to be in the mouth of a fish? Why couldn't we have just crashed the surface of the ground where Jesus was and pick up coins? Was that too much for him to do? No, it wasn't too much for him. But Jesus was showing them his capacity as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And the one who is able... I mean, what is the relevance of a coin in the mouth of a fish? That is not usually where you look for money. He didn't say go to the market and talk to the lady that sells the bell peppers to give you a coin. God had to send a fish. <laughs> he sent a fish to carry a coin. This is the God that we serve. And the fish had a location. So we must not be derailed by what is popular. We need to follow God. At every junction of my life, you know, I, I have multiple testimonies of how being where God wanted me to be was very, very instrumental for financial breakthrough. I remember when I finished my master's degree, I was working at, uh, at NC State and you know, some of you might have heard this testimony before. And I started looking for something in my field. And I had two opportunities come. One was going to be paying, I don't know, like 75% more than the other one. And I prayed about it. I mean, it looked logical to take the offer that was going to be paying more. But the Lord told me, I have no, that's not where I want you. This is where I want you. I followed where God wanted me. It did not seem logical, but I had peace about where God wanted me. And within a year, I was promoted twice. Twice. So it wasn't just promotion. It was like an elevation of levels within a year. If, you know, it, it's not something that happens randomly. But there's something about being where God wants us that accelerates the blessings of God. And so it's very important that we are prayerful. And asking God, where do you want me? I, you know, it, it's not about, oh, the popular schools. Yes, the popular schools here, yeah, the Ivy League schools, whatever. It, 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 maybe that's not where God wants your child. 
Pray about from where those children are young. Ask God where God wants them to be. Ask God where God, what is it that God wants them to do? We, there is a joke at times among, you know, immigrants, not just of African descent, you know, any, a, a lot of developing econ economies in the world. There's a tendency for the child to study this and study that, but what is God asking that child to do? There is, a, there is a place, there is a place that God has given that child. So the place is the land. The land, you may not see it, you may say, uh -uh, Pastor Shea, I don't own a piece of land. Well, you own a piece of land. That is what I am here to tell you this morning. You own a piece of land, you have an inheritance. We have a, an heir now, a prince of Wales in the United Kingdom of, of, of England, who has to his name thousands and thousands of acres of land. Just because he's a prince of an earthly heritage, and you stood up here on this altar and you called yourself the child of God. And you are telling me that you don't have an inheritance. Well, it's an inheritance that money cannot buy. And it is an inheritance that we might not be able to see with the physical eyes. But there is a blood that has purchased for us. An inheritance that is everlasting. There is a land that is kept for us. What is happening is that many of us do not know where that land is. We, we, we have not asked God. We are busy looking at other people's land. Ah, they have a lot of tomatoes on that land. We are covetous. And we are running after things that cannot supply us or those coming behind us. But there is an inheritance. There is an inheritance purchased by the blood of the Lamb. You have a land. You have a land. I want you to rise up with me and begin to tap the feet and say, Oh earth, yield your increase. Oh earth, yield your increase. You may be seated. When I go to work, let me tell you a quick testimony. I wasn't even planning to share this. And I have 10 minutes, but we've done what we need to do. God is going to break holds over our lives. God is going to open our eyes. Every veil that is covering us and limiting us in the way we think. We think only the concept of money, but money is not what we are called to have. We have been called out into an inheritance. We have not been called to possess the perishable. We have been called to possess the imperishable, the everlasting, that which cannot be seen or quantifiable. It is settled by the blood of Jesus. There was a time the Lord told me, well, every time you step into this place of work, I want you to say, wherever the sole of my feet shall touch, I will possess. So I started saying it. Everywhere there's the word of God. It's what God told the Israelites. It says, wherever the sole of your feet shall touch, you will possess it. I started saying it. I started saying it. I said it, I said it, I rose to the highest level in that place. In fact, I, I did not become the director in that place, but it, it happened that I'm not boasting. It was just, it, you, you know when God gives you influence? A lot of us, we fight for positions, but what you need in life is not position. What you need is influence. Influence is leadership. Position is just a title. There's a lot of people who are titles and they are just figureheads. They don't make any impact. There is no policy. There is no change. They cannot affect anything. But God gave me influence. If they mentioned the name of that office, everybody pointed to me. And it came a time when I was desiring change and growth. And I was like, Lord, what is going on? And the Lord said, well, it is time for you to change that prayer. You've been saying, wherever the soul of my feet shall touch this place, that I will possess. It is now time for you to think bigger and begin to mention the name of the entire institution. And the minute I started praying that prayer, God opened doors. Because the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We need to stop focusing and limiting ourselves to what we can see and feel. Be where God wants you to be. Tell your neighbor. Thank you, ma. The second 
principle of financial dominion is we must sow in the land. Sow in the land where God has put you. Isaac did what? That's what we read. Isaac sowed in that land. At times we detest the land where God has given us. Sow in the land. He sowed in the land. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Now this is where things get a little bit, you know, interesting. You know, whether we are born somewhere or not does not matter. <laughs> it is where God has assigned you. In fact, you see throughout scripture, God has something about immigration because nobody, the borders are, you know, to God because he owns the earth. So there are times when God will say, come out, go, sit, stand. And so if God has brought you here, either geographically or you know with destiny or whatever own where God has put you it is where God has assigned to us that belongs to us amen and we must cultivate the land that God has given us because that was what God called us to do when he created us he said cultivate he put us in there and say cultivate it he said cultivate it we cannot just be consumers we must give the land assigned to us where is the land where God has planted us amen your land is your home your land is your marriage your land is your family your land is your neighborhood your land is your church your land is your work your land is your school your city the country where you live, the people, organization, and charities. Amen? And so, it is very important. What do we sow? We sow our substance. You say, you know what, Pastor? I don't have anything. Sow what is in your hand. You saw that man had a lot of seeds. One of the man, 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 men has a lot of seeds. The other one only has a few grains in their hand. Amen? We must sow our gifts, our talents, time, and resources. And how can we sow in this day and age? We can sow by giving to the poor. Proverbs 19, 17. And you are like, yeah, well, I'm poor myself. <laughs> well, if you think you are poor, I tell you there are people who are poorer than you are. And this is the word of God. In Proverbs 19, 17, it says... Whoever gives to the poor is actually lending to God and God will repay them. There are times when it's very easy to, to, to give to people who look like they can repay us. But God honors it when we give to people who can never repay us. Amen? We must give our tithes and offerings. It's very easy to overlook that and say, you know, I don't have... I, I'm not making enough. I can barely pay my bills. I want to tell you that God is faithful. God will open doors for you that you cannot even begin to imagine. God will, I, I, we don't have time. <laughs> you know, when we're worshiping this morning, I was crying and honoring God because our oldest is going to be 20 this week. And I have a picture of him when he was turning one. I was carrying him. I was a young mom, you know, just figuring life out. And I look back at how, how far God has brought us. From days of not having any food, I stand upon this altar to tell. No food to what God has done. God is good and his mercies endures forever. God is good. God is good. So give what is in your hand. Your first fruits. The, the, my our younger two started, they, started, they took a little job this summer and I told them, they thought I was joking. I'm like, that very first paycheck, it is going to who? To God. Because we are sowing a covenant. 
We are not buying Adidas. We are not doing that. Adidas, Adidas will even be begging you to buy shares from them. But Adidas come later. We sow into the kingdom. We sow into the land that God has given to us. This is not a joke. One of them was like, ah, eh, skinny conk, you know. <laughs> the card is not doing this. I'm like, we will figure it out. Let's use uh, some financial app and we must pay this first route. It goes to the Lord. It goes to the Lord. And anytime there is a change, there is some kind of financial breakthrough or, or blessing, even any, anything, it's a, anything that God gives, a tenth of it or more than a tenth. These things are principles that the enemy cannot argue with in offering, in pledges, in giving to the poor, in fighting. And we must also invest, you know. Um, thank God for Minister Anthony in the first service. I was watching it. I wasn't here in person, but I was watching it. Really touched on the importance of investing. We need to educate ourselves, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So sowing is what yields increase for financial dominion. Increase is a fruit of financial dominion. And sowing is also an act of obedience and faith. May God help us in Jesus' name. Another concept of financial dominion is we must dig wells. Somebody say dig wells. Say dig wells. Now, digging wells is a little bit... Anybody here dug a well before? <laughs> or helped out with digging wells, is a little bit more labor intensive. And that was just the only picture that I could find. I'm not trying to say that the only people that can dig wells are men. But digging wells is actually a metaphoric, is a metaphor for what I'm trying to say. That there is a process. Digging wells, it takes time. It's a process, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Financial dominion is not a quick thing. You know how, you know, some people will say, give us 10. If somebody is saying there was, there was all these things that were going on with, um, I don't even know what they call it, maybe Bitcoin or some crazy stuff where people were trading and it was yielding very volatile, volatile interest. And then all of a sudden it just collapsed. It's like, I mean, common sense tells you if it sounds too good to be true, it is, you know, it's a, it's a lie. So we have to make sure, amen, that we are following biblical principles. And digging wells means looking beyond ourselves. In fact, the wells that Isaac was digging, he was redigging them. These were wells that his own father had dug. Digging wells is what provides for the generation behind us. And we need to think of that. We need to think of wells. You, nobody can just go somewhere randomly and say, you know, I'm going to dig a well. You, you cannot just go do that. You first have to survey the land. You have to have the right tools. You have to make sure that you have the right team of people. Amen. And so this is in, in having financial dominion, we must educate ourselves. Somebody say, I will educate myself. We have to know who we are in God. Amen. We need to understand the financial system of where we are. The way things work in North Carolina is very different from the way things work in Maryland and very different from how it works in Alaska. The business that is going to do well here might not work well in other parts of the country. And the financial systems are all different. So it's very important that we are knowledgeable and that we are digging wells for the generation that is coming because that is what provides supply. We are leaving something behind for those coming behind us. Please, let's rise up as I close. Let's rise up. I'm just going to run through this very quickly. It's very important that we avoid strife and contention. There was a lot of contention with Isaac and with the wells that he was digging, but you kept avoiding it. What 
strife and contention does is that it eliminates peace. And when there is no peace, there is no prosperity. The enemy will have a foothold and it gives the enemy a, a, a license to act nonsensically, <laughs> like my people will say. So we have to make room for peace. If somebody is fighting for a position, you know, step aside. God will give you your own. Amen? Amen? Amen. And the Bible says in Genesis 26, 22, he moved. Anytime they said, you know, we have come, he moved. And every time he moved, God will bless him again. Because that was where God wanted him. And lastly, do not give up on your possession. Somebody say, I will not give up. I will not give up on what God has given to me. Say, I will not give up on what God has given to me. There may be contention around. There may be difficulties. But if you know, we started off with knowing where God wants us. If we know that is where God wants us to be. If you are sure that is the inheritance that you have. That you are doing what God has asked you to do. Then you never give up. Just lift your right hand with me. And begin to say, Father, every strong good of financial limitation, I break them over my life, over my generation. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart to see what are the measurable riches that you have in me through the blood of Jesus. I will reign with you. I will be an heir of the kingdom on this earth. And my life and my land will yield increase for your glory and for your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.